what's up everyone welcome back to the channel boozer here thanks for stopping by happy monday by the way happy april fool's day um this video is not going to be any kind of weird uh <laughs> april fool's video so everything i say in this video will be uh legit uh real um i wanted to make a video about um the past armands titan event and past uh fusion and go through some of the things that we learned from uh those two big big events and how we can better prepare ourselves for what is to come um so let's jump right into that all right guys so this is the past armands fusion plan uh this is the most recent fusion and should give us a rough idea of what Plarium is kind of up to so from the past couple of fusions actually they've been incorporating a hero's path into the um fusion um Armands was the first one where they've actually um stated what is actually in the hero's path in the past it was kind of like um a mystery um, and you know that really messes things up you can't really plan for it it, it was really difficult but for our mans they actually told us exactly what it was from the beginning which made it a lot easier to plan um, definitely more helpful that way so what do we know about this so for the upcoming fusion for uh, eostrid dream song we might be able to expect a hero's path as well similar to how our mans uh, was set up hero's path near the end of the fusion that's also how um and Korra, the previous fusion to Armands, was also set up. They had the hero's path near the end of the fusion. But in her instance, it was, um, I believe, champion training and uh, dungeon diving. So it wasn't shard related. For Armands, it was shard related. Um, also, for the Ancora fusion, it was Ancora's five star soul as the main reward. And in the hero's path for Armands, it was actually um, Old Oak Podrig, which is a guaranteed champion, basically. So. In this case, we can kind of think of the Dream Song uh, champion. Uh, what is more likely to occur? It's likely to be a hero's path at the end of the fusion, but what will we likely get? We can only speculate on the reward, but I think it's probably going to be her five star soul because I feel like Armands' five star soul was strong enough or desired enough to basically run its own Titan event. Um, and people would actually go for it and participate, which I'm pretty sure most people did. So we can assume that maybe Dream Song is not as impactful a champion or as sought after. So her five star soul likely would be in a hero's path, a very condensed event uh, for us to partake in. It might not actually be shards. It might be something else like training, for example, just like Ancora. And then we might expect a Titan event after Dream Song to include maybe a new champion. Um, so that's just some speculation on my part, but in terms of what we can do to prepare, um, there is going to be a Soul Stone Awakening Boost uh, event that's happening on April 2nd. They're doubling the chances of you getting six star souls from mortal and, and immortal uh, soul stones. And there's also going to be a blah, 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 Soul Stone Chase event. Soul Stone Chase event. Um, I mean, that's a really juicy, that's a really juicy incentive. But you know what happened? This exact same situation happened with Armands' fusion, where they had the Soul Stone pull event with the double odds for six star souls just before the fusion dropped. And in my opinion, I thought for sure that they would put the Soul Stones in the Hero's Path. And I was 100% right, they did put the Soul Stones as part of the Hero's Path. So I did um, kind of preemptively pass on the Soul Stone event before Armands' fusion. And the Soul Stones that I basically saved by passing allowed me to save about four Sacred Shards worth of points towards the Hero's Path. So for me, it was super worth it um, because the extra Sacreds that I basically saved um, allowed me to complete the hero's path that was part of the armands fusion that allowed me to get uh, old oak podrig with pretty limited shard uh, commitment uh, on my end but of course it was still quite an expensive uh, hero's path for old oak uh, podrig with that being said would i advise to hold on to your soul stones or potentially a soul stone hero's path coming up it's really hard to say and is really um dependent on your account um 
you know, I, I have about 60 here. And by the time a hero's path shows up in the future, you know, we're probably looking at closer to 100 by the time that uh event shows up and it you know 100 might actually be pretty impactful right 100 might be impactful towards a, he a hero's path towards a five star soul for dream song the thing is i don't particularly value dream songs as soul that highly to the point where i would commit big resources towards it um previously we had the ancora five star soul as part of the hero's path and i did uh, get that five star soul but it was um off of training and ancora is probably going to be a more impactful um arena champion than uh eostrid dream song the upcoming fusion so in my opinion like on first you know thought i would not probably commit and save that much resources towards a five star soul for eostrid dream song um she would benefit from the accuracy However, I view her as more of a Hydra champion at best, um, as opposed to an arena PvP champion. She definitely can run in arena as well. I mean, she has an aura for it. She, her A1 is good for it. And then she has the up and down, uh, up and down in the uh, speed and then the attack speed. Uh, attack up is also very good, right? So she's definitely viable for arena. But I think for high end arena where the extra accuracy is very important, I don't think is she really needs it so i think even if it was a five star soul i'll probably pass the only curveball is if plarium gives us like a guaranteed champion and then the souls become useful there so for me i'm actually still undecided on whether i would pull soul stones or not um getting the opportunity for six star souls is actually you know obviously really nice it's going to give your account a big boost if you get the uh, lucky six star soul um, and you know, based on what I've seen, the six star boost is actually kind of impactful as long as you have some, uh, some stones to pull. So it's actually a pretty big decision for me. Uh, if I want to go for it, I think I'm kind of on the fence. I might actually go for it. And it's because of the reasonings that if it was a hero's path for a five star dream song, soul, I'd probably pass. Um, and I'll probably be okay with just committing my soul stones here. So that's kind of my thinking right now. All right, what else did we learn from this Armand's Fusion plus Titan event uh, situation that's been going on for the last five weeks, basically their fifth anniversary, right? So for the anniversary, the Titan event, so you see here I got my 1500. They actually, you know, gave us a, gave us a couple uh, mysterious uh, ways of getting these points. They didn't, oh, they didn't uh, you know, like show us this final event until the last day. It was kind of sneaky, but I think in general, it's probably a good thing for the community to have this kind of event. Uh, personally, I think the mystery pack here for basically 1,000 um, mystery shards for 10 bucks, I don't think is uh, a great deal. Uh, considering you're basically only getting, um, I mean, you're, you're getting the legendary book for it, but you're also getting the points. I mean, if the points are very um, useful for you, it might actually be worth it. You can also do the conversion uh, with energy. How much would $10 worth of energy uh, give you? Obviously, $10 worth of gems for a monthly gem gives you, uh, you know, a, a lot of energy. But if you're using just instant rates for, um, for gems, we can do the conversion here. So, for example, here, it's like if you buy the first of this spring pack combo, you get 10 bucks. 10 bucks gives you what 2500 energy honestly that's probably not that's not enough to complete the um the dungeon divers part right 2500 energy um that's probably going to give you probably just under 2000 uh points um so you probably need two of those to get the full um to get the full 170 if you were stuck here and then you got the first 10 dollars then you can get the 100 probably from 2500 to 4400 so in general like you're not getting too much out of it um buying energy wise so it makes kind of sense if you were in this position that you needed the last 100 to maybe go for this and then you would pick up the uh you would pick up the um, all these goodies along the way and then you would pick up the last 100 points uh, as well as getting the legendary tome um, as a final prize, right? And of course, you get nine, you know, one thousand pieces of food, which can turn into chickens or whatever. So, 
it's kind of worth it. I, I don't, I'm not too sure. I mean, it's a conversion between like food and the extra rewards versus gear and probably silver. Um, but it's also time spent like opening mystery shards and all that stuff. But yeah, for me, I think it's kind of worth it. If you have the extra mystery shards, go for the book. I mean, you get a stone, you get an ancient shard, so it's not too bad. Um, personally, I just went for a 300 and I'm going to call it a day. Um, I'm pretty like capped out here. I actually have to spend some silver to buy uh, stash space. Uh, I don't advise using sil silver to buy stash space, space because it's not really worth it. The conversion is better for gems. Um, but I have so much silver and I don't have that many gems. So I didn't want to use gems. So I used silver instead. I spent about 100 million just to open up like I forgot how many uh, spaces, like 80 spaces or something. So we know Plarium is super tricky. They got some, uh, you know, tricks up their sleeves still. Um, this is why I advocated to get the points early for the Titan event. And also there was that deck of fate that was really, really nasty. This deck of fate um, that basically had 150 points in here. This was a little bit of a surprise as well because it was less than what we've anticipated. But because we went for the early points, we didn't have to sweat the deck of fate. And we're basically just chilling, uh, deciding between going for the last 100 points of the Dungeon Divers or going for this mystery 100 points, which could have actually been a fusion warm-up or part of a fusion warm-up they've done it in the past. But it shows that Playroom does have some tricks up their sleeves and being prepared kind of early makes sense. Um, so I would advocate being a little bit prepared instead of focusing on gambling for future uh, benefits. Um, you, I advocated actually to actually complete the Dungeon Divers earlier because I said it might actually be, um, you know, it might actually be a time crunch for some people. They might, might, not, might not have enough time to complete all these points if you have like a slower dungeon team for example so it's always safe to just do it first and then not worry about it and then this event wasn't actually a freebie you needed three mystery shards you needed room time all that stuff it's not a guarantee right it's not as easy as it looks so definitely plan ahead um, don't get too uh, focused on trying to save every last bit especially when you have something as big as a five star soul on the line um, but yeah, that's one thing that I've noticed. Also, guys, I've had questions about why I keep the soul until um, I, why I haven't claimed the soul. And basically, this is the situation where, um, you know, I've, I'm proven right that they're actually offering the uh, Soul Stone Champion Ch Soul Stone Chase event, which Chase tournament, which will allow me to capitalize on claiming those souls and getting additional free points for them. So this is one of those situations where it actually worked out and it makes me look like a giga brain player, but it's actually just something that I habitually do, basically save my resources until it's the last moment to redeem them. Um, because you never know when there's gonna be an event uh, that you might benefit from when you claim those events. So this might be something for you guys to consider in the future. Don't automatically jump and claim things right away because you never know what might happen down the road lastly we have this uncommon uh, spider tournament i mean you gotta give playroom a little bit of props for trying to do something different personally i'm not too hung up on this stuff i don't really have uncommons built out to uh complete spider i have like one armiger and i'm not going to bother uh, building out champions to try to do this kudos to these guys trying to do this i think you can do this with maybe like low levels and then you can maybe grind out some of these like easy uh these easy rewards I, i'm not too sure um but i know armiger is going to be in there um, but i don't have too many uncommons built out so i'm not even going to look into participating there luckily they didn't put the titan points in this otherwise that would be pretty damn scummy of them lastly guys we're going to take a quick look at the playroom schedule so far nothing they've input into the beginning of the week that is much of concern to us they have an ice golem tournament coming basically nothing like no rewards and then this artifact enhancement event, which is basically nothing as well. Um, we have the uncommon spider tournament, as we've already gone through, warm up tournament, and then the soul chase, which is coming tomorrow. We have the sand devil, which is pretty standard nowadays. I really like this because obviously I have a really strong team for this, but it's a good way to kind of focus your energy towards sand devil and get a little bit extra in return. Hopefully, they do something for a shogun in the future. Um, you know, something along the lines of a turn attack would be nice. Uh, gives me a reason to farm it as long um, as well as get some extra 
resources along the way um, but yeah so anyways guys hopefully you guys enjoyed this video it's a little bit of a speculative video but it does provide some insight into what Plarium has done uh, in the past and you know based on past events it's likely that Plarium will do some of these um, tactics in the future so it's always good to have them in the back of your mind so you can prepare uh, at least mentally uh, anyways guys lots of content coming in the next uh, week or so as the fusion starts up and ramps up a little bit we got a couple down uh, down days before the fusion starts and uh, exciting times i got uh, set up for a test server so super excited for that and uh, yeah hopefully you guys will enjoy the content that comes out of that so anyways guys thanks a lot for watching again and i'll see you guys in the next video